Well, don't be surprised the next time you're at the doctor's office and he says, just take two video games and call me in the morning because this one, well, this one you had to see coming. A game maker arguing when you play with its stuff, you're actually helping your brain. My sons have tried to pull this on me. Anyway, Project Evo stands by what it says, that it does sharpen your noggin while you play, which, of course, makes it a perfect start to the cable news segment that is taking the world by storm. What the tech tonight going deep inside your head? And here to play neurologist, tech watch extraordinaire Christina Warren. Christina, what do you make of all this, that, that it's good for you, that it will sharpen your, your brain? It actually makes a lot of sense, and there's been a lot of studies that show that playing games can have an impact on serotonin levels, dopamine levels in the brain. And in this case, this Project Evo, it's actually being developed by people um, for uh, uh, children or, or adults, I guess, who have autism right. and ADHD. But what are unique to its games or what its technology that, let's say, others might not? Well, they're basically creating the game around um, uh, methods that can help those parts of the brain for people who suffer from those disorders. So it can help them focus and also maybe help with some other issues related to autism. So what we found is if you can, when neurologists are doing studies about video games and, and watching how people's brains react, um, that's then going back to game developers who can start to build experiences that tr trigger those parts of the brain. You know what I fear happens though? Other game makers start saying, glomming onto this and saying, you know, <laughs> Our games do sharpen you, you know, for, for wanton killing, I guess. But you know what I mean? That, where does this go? I, you know, I don't know where it goes. All I do know is that certainly playing Tetris for, uh, for many, many years has, has made me really good at puzzles. Really? Yes. That's interesting. It says a lot about you. <laughs> All right, in the meantime, who needs 3D cakes or 3D cars when your kids can now make and design their own 3D toys? It's true. An Autodesk new Tinker Play app supposedly makes it easy. Do you know how this works? Yeah, this is so cool. So basically the idea is, you know, 3D printers are all the rage and you can do almost anything with them. But what this app lets you do is basically it has a, a number of kind of set components and then kids can customize toys like an action figure or something else and, and tweak it to their liking and then print out the parts and put it together. How do they print out the part? You use a 3D printer. Of course. So you use a 3D printer, and then, but, but the cool thing is, I mean, they're able to design basically their own toy and then put it together. So I think this is actually remarkably cool. All right, so what is it interesting, like Lego, there's an online feature of Lego where you can design your own 3D drive, and they will build or provide the blocks for exactly. you to make just that. This is similar to that. I mean, the, the difference here is that it's something you could conceivably do at home instead of having oh, to I wait see, you see. know, for it to arrive. Um, and, God uh, forbid kids should wait two days <laughs> for the parts to come. Well, there's also something, I think, to be said about the act of creating and figuring out how things work, because I think that there's something really educational about the process. You know, we're just talking about video games and Well, how much brain. are 3D printers? You know, I mean, they, they're all over the map, right? They're all over the map. Um, so this isn't going to be something for everybody. But if you think this is what's happening now, you know, imagine you maybe you know three, four years from now when these things could be more common, and this could be a great way for kids to learn both how things work together and how things are made, and, and also you realize what you're just saying. You're justifying games for kids, yes. whether they have value to them or not, and now <laughs> they can print out whatever they're doing, whether again it has value or not. But Toys are okay. fun. I'm, I'm totally right, okay with that. All right, finally, first class that isn't just about the seat. It is a room and your own 32-inch TV <laughs> and a private butler and a bed and shower and personal mini bar. And for 20 grand, one way okay. on Etihad Airways, it is all yours. The National Airline of the United Emirates is taking first class to a whole new level and figuring the sheiks and sharks who fly its planes won't make much of a fuss over the fare. Uh, they're probably right about that. Christine, <laughs> they're right? probably right. I don't know how many people there are out there who want to fly in this sort of luxury, but by all accounts, I mean, the guy that, that took one of these flights said that the only problem was the flight wasn't long enough. He didn't want really to get off the airplane. I don't know about you. Well, I how just, many seats or, or rooms like this can they have? They can only have a couple, and so yeah. it's one of those things where they may, might only be able to have one or two per plane. They have other business class uh, sections, but, I mean, if you're willing to pay that much money and get your own private butler and, and gourmet food and a full bed and but a you know. If you think about it, when you take a first class ticket, if, like an immediate, you don't wait for it, a business first class ticket to Tokyo or to Beijing, um, you're over 10 grand. Yeah. Right at the get go. 
So you might as well plop down 10 grand to get the bed in the butler. If you're going to do it, you might as well get the bed in the butler. You're absolutely right. All right. Do you think other airlines will follow this, or is this unique to certain high niche? I think it's unique to certain high niche air, uh, airlines. You know, uh, the Emirates can, can do that. Uh, I think Singapore Airline has something similar. Yeah. Uh, but I this mean, is not something Southwest is going to be doing <laughs> Can you imagine? Tomorrow. Can you imagine a, a bed on Southwest? I don't even want to think about it because... It, I can't even imagine a big seat on Southwest. I, I, neither can I, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right. I can imagine somebody singing to me while I'm trying to sleep. Exactly. I would have a butler to have someone singing to me. <laughs> that's very good. Uh, thank you very, very much. In the meantime...